I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 40, from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along in the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse of what we're going to be looking at today. Please follow me along. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Follow me along because sometimes I skip the groove and the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Be a Berean. Switch the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Okay? Please, get the scriptures and follow me along. Isaiah 40, we're going to start with just two verses. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, Seth, your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Mm. People out there that are from the Jesuit camp, you know, the textural critics and whatnot, have brought up things which uh, Deutero Isaiah. Second Isaiah, because in Isaiah 40, there is a noticeable shift from one to the other. And <laughs> the yea hath God said crowd, you know, the spiritual, temporal, Jesuit coadjutor scumbags out there have, uh, yea hath God said that uh, another Isaiah wrote um, <laughs> Isaiah 40 <laughs> onward. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. That it is often said of the book of Isaiah that it's a kind of a way, I don't know if this is the right word, a synopsis of the scriptures themselves because there's a split here in 40 to where the, he changes his preaching direction or whatever. Uh, and some have compared like onto Isaiah, uh, um, chapters 1 on verse 39 onto the Old Testament and like to make this comparison of uh, Isaiah 40 and onward onto the New Testament even though doctrinally that's not the case but you know with the book of Isaiah it is said you know <laughs> uh, I like hymns by the way I, I gotta mention this I like hymns I like to sing hymns I don't always sing them the musically correct way but um i enjoy singing hymns and i enjoy hearing hymns sung unto me by those who are of the church of the living god i i really do um you know because johnny cash johnny cash you y'all know who he is he was a christian yes he was yeah and i can guarantee you johnny cash is in hell right now yeah, but he, he sang some hymns. Sure did. Elvis Presley. Elvis, the king. <laughs> yeah. He was a Christian. Yeah. He sang some hymns too. And I can guarantee you, Elvis is in hell. <gasps> Brad, you, oh, hush, hush, hush. Yeah. So, when it comes to this kind of thing, you know, it doesn't matter if a devil is going to sing a hymn to you, right? It doesn't matter who's singing the hymn because it's all about the hymn, right? So it doesn't matter if a devil sings a hymn to you because it's the hymn that matters, not the one who is singing it, right? So, you're going to have a devil sing hymns to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like you're going to have a devil try to teach you truth. <laughs> because remember, you got to remember, why are we singing the hymn? It doesn't matter who it is who's singing the hymn to you. Right? <laughs> Oh, oh you, you can do whatever you want to do to try to defend yourself and justify yourself and all your heresy. 
As far as I'm concerned, your cover has been blown. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fine, kaput. Fine, kaput. You blew your cover. And you can go about and try to defend yourself and all your ridiculous doctrines that you want to uh, put off on the body of Christ. You can go ahead and try to do that. You can go right ahead. Go right ahead. But as far as I'm concerned, your cover is blown. <laughs> so you run along, you spiritual temporal Jesuit coadjutor. So, but anyway, I, I had to address that. Excuse me. You know, brethren, most, <laughs> if not all, of the brethren that I have correspondence with are going through sufferings. And I don't know about you, but I take offense and a gate. When you got some Christian who is living life at his fullest potential and as all of the best of the world telling you about happiness, joy, peace, uh, discernment, tem good temperaments and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It, it doesn't seem to hold the same weight, does it? Does it? No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You know, like in my recommendations, even though I have said to this stupid uh, robot mind of YouTube that I don't want to see this, every once in a while a Phil Robinson thing will come up. And, you know, I, I listen to this guy who teaches water baptismal regeneration, uh, doesn't read the scriptures, okay? And just the whole, you know, talks about being or uh, staying away from fleshly things, but yet they're okay with watching television and, and, and whatever, whatever. And here you got a multimillionaire telling you about how to have peace with God. And, you know, you got to remember, brethren, that now, right away, there is nothing in and of itself wrong with someone having better things that are of this world. I mean, there, there really isn't. But here's the problem. Okay? Here's the problem. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 on to 31, we have to remember this. We have to remember this. Well, most of us uh, poor saints of the Lord Jesus Christ are struggling daily with the uh, who are vexed daily by the filthy conversation of the wicked, okay? <laughs> All right? Who, do, who are wondering whether or not they're going to be able to even make it today, okay? There's nothing wrong in and of itself with having things like, you know, having money or having a good stockpile of possessions or whatever. But the problem comes with Verse 26 on to verse 31 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. See, the wise men, wisdom equated, uh, wise equated to wisdom. But is this wisdom, this wise, a reference unto the fear of the Lord? Not so, because it says after the flesh. Okay? says not many not many mighty not many noble are called okay why why we'll continue let's continue but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise again this wise here is not reference unto the fear of the Lord but those that are after the flesh and things of the world okay things of the world Okay? But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Like us poor saints of the church of the living God. Okay? Alright? To shame these 
Christians out there <laughs> who are more concerned with defending a word than the Lord himself. Just what? <clears throat> anyway. Uh, and base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why is all that? That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And he's quoting out of Jeremiah chapter 9 here, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Hmm. Let him glory in the Lord. Hmm. See, people who have it made, the uh, wise, according after the flesh, the mighty and the noble, you know, them blue bloods, like all those holy roller uh, British Israelites over there in England, right? Nothing against you, say, brethren, in England. You know, there are a few, a select few over there that are dastardly devils, okay? One of the, who is really easy to get going. <laughs> anyway, these people, brethren, who are wise after the flesh, who are mighty, who are noble, they have it worse than us because they can fall back on something other than the Lord themselves and their provisions their whatever okay they can do that but see when it comes to us poor saints our only hope and the only hope that we have is our Lord Jesus Christ God our Father himself he is our hope he is the blessed hope and all these spiritual and temporal Jesuit coadjutors that are rife here on this platform and in all the other platforms. Oh, wow. Wow. Check out Odyssey sometimes and see the anti-Shemitism that is just rife on Odyssey. That, that, that one, wow. That's a waste of time. Wow. That one, yeah, yeah. Go to Luke chapter 6. Oh, Elba, before we go to Luke, let's remember... 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Let us remember this. And 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly or thoroughly, <laughs> Furnished unto all good works. Shh. Okay? Now, let's go to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. Not Matthew. Luke chapter 6. Verses 20 on to verse 26. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Our Lord Jesus Christ was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Okay? But we're going to see here that he specifically says the kingdom of God, which is a reference onto the spiritual. Okay? He was there offering the kingdom of the physical, literal uh, kingdom of heaven onto the Jews within his king. But they had to believe that he was and is their king. Okay? That's how that works. All right? And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast you out and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Hmm. 
Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers on to the prophets. And in John's, hold your place, hold your place. In John 16, John 16, John 16, verses 20 on to verse 22. Excuse me. God. John 16, verses 20 on to 22. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A while ago, almost a year ago, I think, the Lord gave me a three-part video to do, uh, which will be in the description box, Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy. Okay, that uh, check that out. It's a three-part video in the description box. Please check that out. Okay, There's a difference between happiness and joy. Okay, happy is only temporary and has to be keeping um, filled up, kind of like a cigarette addiction. But joy is eternal. Okay, in the description box that will be if you have any questions. Okay, a woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow. Now, wait, wait, but I will see you again. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. Now, okay, as for the death, burial, and resurrection, okay, they were sorrowful. He was going to go to the cross and die. And they did see him again at the resurrection when he was amongst them for that time before he went up to heaven in their sight okay so yes but also okay and ye now therefore have sorrow but i will see you again and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man taketh from you we will see the lord eventually okay yes with the death burial and resurrection okay he walked he came on to his own Again, after he was resurrected and stayed with them for a while, right? I forget how many days it was precisely, but he did. Okay, and then he went up to heaven. And then uh, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit, came and was given. Okay? All right? So yes, yes, yes. When he's talking here, he's talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. And then, you know, in the book of Acts and, and whatnot, how he was amongst them. And here in Luke... You know, how he was amongst them as well, okay? But see, for us today, okay, the closer we are getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, things are getting worse. Oh, the Christians are coming out of the woodwork. And there's no, and you know, there are those out there who are trying to blur the distinction between the faith that was once delivered on to the saints and what is today Christianity. They're two different things. See, there are two different things. We have to have distinction. Because remember, brethren, these Jesuit spiritual and temporal coadjutors can, the devil and his ministers of righteousness, can mimic spiritual fruit up to a point up to a point okay and that takes time to discern which we have already discussed that was one and two admonition reject going on now to other things because the body of christ we need strength and the lord is our strength but i know for certain that so many of you whom i love dearly are struggling Well, the world and the Christians are just having a gay old time. <laughs> and then they want to rub, try, try to rub that stuff off on you. It's like, get away from me, man. 
Oh, I'll pray for you. Uh, uh, please don't. <laughs> okay? I don't want your God having anything to do with me. Thank you. Go away. Okay? All right? And, and skip a little and go to now in John 16, verses 32 and 33. Behold, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. The soul of the Godhead. Yes. And of course, that's in concordance with, uh, I believe, that is Zechariah where I will smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I might not have that right, but that's an Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled. The shepherd was uh, struck and the sheep were scattered. Okay? That's what he's making a reference to. Okay? Uh, let me see. Where is that? Uh, never mind. Verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me, ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Christianity, this disgusting Christianity that so many people want to try to keep alive and keep afloat when Satan has turned it into something that is nothing resembling the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. And they do that to defend their own selves, their heresies, and to attack, which we've already discussed. But uh, this thing called Christianity is on its last leg and has been. Okay? But Christianity has made cliché so many truths of Scripture that they're, they're, it's appalling that the devil through Christianity will make cliche the truth of God's word and ultimately making and trying to make the word of God of no effect and see go to John now chapter 12 John chapter 12 verses 23 on verse 28 John chapter 12 verses 23 on the verse 28. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified in death. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And again, that's a good verse about um, how there has to be a death before something can be born again. And you got to remember, too, the Jesuit spiritual temporal coadjutors also talked, uh, attacked about being born again, that it was something for the Jews and not relative for us today. Okay? It was just for the... Uh, relative. Excuse me. Wrong. Bad choice of words. But that being born again was not something for us Gentiles, but it was just for the Jews. See? <laughs> okay. Um, Paul never did use the term born again. He did not. But he sure did describe it in perfect detail, didn't he? Yes, yes. And see, that, that's another trait and tactic of the enemy. That they will try to, uh, you know, hyper-dispensationally in a way. To do, try to say, well, this part of Romans is for the time of Jacob's trouble. Or 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 is for the time of Jacob's trouble, doctrinally, lying devil. Okay? That's what these guys do. And then they talk, they'll say, well, Peter talked about being born again, but Paul never did, and Jesus did. So that means being born again must be for only the Jews. <laughs> and we wonder, brethren, why we are so grown, right?
There has to be a death before we can become a new creature. Something old has to die. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now my soul is, now is my soul trouble. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this cause came I on to this hour. Yes, Christ came to die, to be the perfect sacrifice for sin. The blood that he shed. Okay? Because he did what no man could do. He kept the law perfectly. Therefore, because he never sinned, God cannot sin. Therefore, even though his flesh was sinful, it was sanctified because he kept the law perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And that also reminded me of Esther. Esther, chapter 4. Esther, chapter 4. Verses 13 on to 14. What are you doing, Brad? Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? We are called to be ambassadors for our Lord Jesus Christ. Many people can have the words, could speak softly like a dragon, and visibly have some semblance of fruit but this is most of what you will see but see how someone lives beyond the, the eyes other of that of the Lord really reflects in what they want to present to you you know you got those things that are just too good to be true yeah, yeah. These people are going to mess up sooner or later. You're not going to be able to keep up that facade perfectly forever, buddy. Yeah. Now back to Luke chapter 6. Picking up at verses 24 on to verse 26. Woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. Remember the rich man and Lazarus. You received your good things in this life, but Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Why, why do you think these devils are all about right now, the best life now? Yes, we have only today. We are not promised even the next few moments. But their best life now, prosperity now, Mm. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. <laughs> oh, good old brother so-and-so. Yeah. Good old brother so-and-so. Ain't got bad things to say about brother so-and-so. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 4 on to verse 10. Somehow I, I really think Paul missed a lot of these memos that 
Christianity is pushing today. I, I really believe he was, he's like, I, 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 miss, I must have been missing something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 4 and verse 10. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tolments, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of flesh, oh, excuse me, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness, on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Jesus Christ is all. And we are his purchased possession. We belong to him. I know so many brethren and sisters who, um, who find it hard to rejoice right now. Whether the machinery is breaking down, whether, uh, <laughs> whether those who are supposed to be your family betraying them and casting you out as evil, and they, you know, they think they're doing God's service, right? Right? We will see him. We will see him. You know, the scriptures talk about us groaning. We will see the Lord. One day this is all going to end. That might not help you right now. But as a source of comfort, as a source of comfort, one day. And remember, at the, uh, when he said, Lazarus, come forth who had been dead for four days, and by now he stinketh. You know, he went, uh, Martha or whoever it was, uh, she said to the Lord, it's like, yes, Lord, I know that he will live again in the resurrection of the just. And the Lord's like, I am the resurrection. Okay? We have that mentality sometimes, don't we? Yes, I know this soon will pass. Yes, I know, eventually. Yes, I know. And the Lord, I am. I am. I am. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the resurrection. Okay? I am the truth. Okay? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Showing you where we can get our comfort. Like it says in Romans chapter uh, 15, verse 4. Okay? For whatsoever things were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Brethren, I know that yes, in the resurrection, I know this too will pass. And remember what our Lord said. I, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Okay? Uh, Philippians 4. And this is, this is another thing that Satan through Christianity has tragically made so cliché. And people will use this portion of Philippians to justify our, their idolatry and their carnality. 
And it's so much more beyond that. But see, Christianity has made cliché so much of the truth of God's Word to, in effect, attempt to make it to have no effect. Good luck. But, Philippians 4, verses 11 on to verse 13. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And of course, Christianity takes verse 13. It's like, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Or if you read a, Bi uh, a Bible, it says, I can do all things through him who strengtheneth me. Who strengthens me. Who's the him? Hmm? Oh, God is spirit, so you got to go to a Jesuit trained cemeterian. No, God is a spirit. Well, Brad, you know, that, that's only talking about the physical things, not the spiritual. Okay? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 on to verse 6. You know? We are here now as the ambassadors of Christ. And as we looked at in Esther, you know, we have been established by our Lord to be his ambassadors for these times. Okay? We have been called for these times to walk according to the scripture and to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Who are we proving that to? We are walking our talk Okay, not just out there, but beyond in these four walls, ceiling and floor. Okay? And the things that we go through, dear brethren, you know, we are to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who do rejoice. I know so many people, our brethren, who I love so much, pray for every single day that are just going through atrocities and some are losing that rejoicing just another day and they are but we mustn't lose sight of that blessed hope who is our Lord Jesus Christ because you know in uh, verses 3 on a verse 6 here Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now, now look at that verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. And he is, and hold your place here. Uh, go to Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Come on. Isaiah 9. Uh, Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Eventually, yes. But he's in control right now, but he is allowing Satan to do run amok right now. Okay? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And when he comes back at his second coming with us, the church of the living God, um, 
Yeah, then he's going to establish the kingdom of heaven. Okay? A thousand years are going to go by, and then he's going to let Satan out of the bottomless pit, and then eventually Satan and all sin will be destroyed, and then the seventh and final dispensation eternity with no sin. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Okay? But our Lord Jesus Christ is the God of all comfort. And we go through things that when our Lord brings us through them, and he will bring you through them eventually. If not, you know, how, how can you remain, how can you remain joyful in all this? Because kill this body, kill me, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For these light afflictions, okay, they're for a, more, a moment and they're working for us a more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Okay, I just bradized that. But he's, our Lord is the God of all comfort. He is the resurrection. He is our peace. He is our victory. He is our everything. He is our all. That's why when someone has the things of this world. That's why it's harder for them because they have other things that they could fall back on. When you and I, as poor saints, we have all things. Possessing, not, not, not possessing anything, yet possessing all things, Jesus Christ. We are his purchased possession. Verse 5, for as the sufferings of, of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. What is this talking about? Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here's another one that Christianity has made cliché. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13 on to verse 14. There hath no temptation taken you, but, at, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted Above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. And remember, idolatry is just worshiping a statue, not yourself looking at yourself in the mirror. Christianity will come to this and say, God won't give you more than you can handle. That's a lie. Okay? And we'll come to this. It's talking about temptation. Okay? And when you look back in retrospect, when you made the dumb, the stupid, excuse me, stupid uh, decision to give yourself over to that sin, in retrospect, looking back, the Lord will reveal to you, uh, remember when you made that stupid decision to go ahead and sin like that? Here was that way of escape that you could have uh, bore it. God, see, God gives you purposely more than you can handle. Why? So you're not self-sufficient. But that you're dependent on him. This is talking about temptation, dear friend. And when it comes to temptation, yes. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Common. Common. James chapter 5. It's meet that we look at James here because during the time of Jacob's trouble, which James is specifically written for, uh, prove that to you. James, uh, servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. And the book of Hebrews is written to who? The Hebrews? Yeah. 
But James chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20. Uh, 7. <laughs> uh, 17 on to verse 20, yes. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the he and the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. You know, uh, we are told about, you know, remember the, the, the prophets. You know, how they suffered. And also we are reminded about the book of Job. How the end of the Lord was pitiful and gracious and of great compassion of how the Lord had mercy on Job after Job went through everything he went through. And we look at, again at the example of the prophets, you know, reading the Old Testament, okay? About how they suffered persecution and now they are comforted. That's why you don't neglect the Old Testament, brother, sister you can find a whole lot of comfort. But verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Is that why you're so adamant about correcting everybody else? about why you're so adamant about pointing out how everybody is wrong except you. Kind of like what Elmer did from New York and what he still does to this day. Everybody is wrong except him. Hmm? Hmm. See, because this talks about, you know, who saves a soul? The Lord. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Ah. So maybe that's why you're so adamant about saying how everybody is wrong except you and that it's your Christian duty to correct everybody yeah yeah and all the while hiding because hey you're you're earning your own salvation aren't you yeah yeah it says right there shall hide a multitude of sins so you you know you're one of these aha aha guys and are uh, looking for every um, chink in the armor to establish attacking points. But yet, I, I, I believe he's, you know, like the easy believism heretics did. You know, he, he just believed, he saved. He's just uh, teaching heresy, you know. Is that why you're so adamant about correcting everybody else? Hmm? Yeah. 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 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. Or, or, excuse me. Yes. 1 Peter chapter 5. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Yeah, like the morons. They have 16-year-old elders. <laughs> okay? Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. Talking down to people and treating them as if they're inferior, as like a Jesuit priest would do. But being in samples to the flock. Hmm. Hmm. There's a time and place for everything. But when you're one who is constantly, all you do is looking to try to find fault for everybody else. Like Elmer did in New York. That's all he still, to this, this day, still does. Everybody's wrong but him. Yeah. Yeah. 
And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, some of you are going through chastisement. Praise the Lord. Because if you weren't, then you'd have to really examine yourself. Okay? But then again, some of you are not going through chastisement, but are suffering. Remember on whom we believe. Remember on whom bore our punishment. Remember who is our hope. Who is the resurrection. Who is our blessed hope. Who is. Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion. As a roaring lion. And when our Lord comes back at the second coming with us, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. He came first to be the lamb, to be sacrificed, to take away the sins of the world, to shed his blood on the cross, yes. But when he comes back, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. So isn't it fitting that our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour? You're not dragon fodder, are you? Whom resists steadfast in the faith? The faith that was once delivered on to the saints not something that is deemed Christian. That is in the hands of Satan. Because, hey, what Christ? Hmm? There is the Lord's Christ, and then there is that spirit of anti-Christ. Hmm? And that man of sin, the son of perdition, he's definitely going to be a Christ Christ means anointed one. <laughs> yes, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And see, the spiritual temporal Jesuit coadjutors will come in trying to say, well, hey, if they're suffering for the name of Christ and they're doing this, step one, step two, step three, step four, ah! Remember, Satan and his ministers of righteousness can mimic, can do, can go through certain things that we as the Church of the Living God go through, but only to a point. Remember, never forget that, brethren. Never forget the example that we looked at in the previous video of Exodus, how the magicians were able to go do certain things, but they could only go so far. Never forget that. Never forget that. Okay? When you got someone pushing a test of a one, two, three, four. Muy rápido. Right? Watch out for such a one as that. Takes time. Takes time. Okay? Because, hey, he's suffering for the name of God. He's suffering for even the scriptures. But see. Keep your eye on them. Watch them. And if you don't want to watch them, I understand that. But you know that skull and crossbones, mark and avoid, and then later the Lord will reveal. Oh, oh, yeah, that's why I was, yeah. Yeah. See, the redemption of the purchased possession draweth nigh. And Satan wants to deceive you that there are many people that are of us. But see, the false 
are falling away. And see, they come in and want to defend that. To justify themselves to maintain their infiltration that they may attack the church of the living God, but also that they may poison you with their heretical doctrine. But that our brethren are going through the same things. Verse 10. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. That's not sinlessly perfect. I remember Dean. He's in heaven. Dean. Multiple sclerosis. Leukemia. He had, a, he, had a, well, he had a number of stuff wrong with him. The guy could not go a day without horrendous pain. Okay? He was a tall man. Relegated to a wheelchair. A frail, frail individual. His name was Dean. Every single day with MS, leukemia. Okay, he, the, the guy was a train wreck. Was it leukemia or cancer? I can't remember. I can't really remember. Another guy also who got off of the pharmacia and uh, used natural means for remedy. He used cannabis. He ate it. Okay, rather than the pharmacia, the sorcery from the Jesuits. He got off all of that. Okay? But lived every day in constant pain. But yet he rejoiced because sooner or later I'm going to be with the Lord. He had that joy in suffering physically that most of us can't even imagine. I know there are people like my wife and my dear brother, my best friend, you know, who have screws and steel in them and they're, they, you know, the dampness and they have sufferings and it's like, but yet, but the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that ye have suffered a while make you perfect. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For these light afflictions, they don't mean anything. What's going to separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Settle you. Settle you. Be still. And know that he is God. Now, I'm not going through some of the physicalities that some of you are. You're right. I have a heart condition, okay, but I might not be having the physicalities that you are. I don't know what it's like to feel your pain. Okay? I don't. You don't know what it's like to deal with a heart condition. Maybe you do. Maybe you do know what it's like to feel their pain. But see, we are, like it says in Romans 12, like it says in Romans 12, okay? In Romans 12, verses 9, on to verse 16. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor, greatly hate that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good, and there is none good but God, remember. Okay? Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, preferring your own, my own brethren. I can't have fellowship with someone who isn't of us. I can't. Nor will I ever again. <laughs> Neither will you, right? 
But we are to prefer one another, our own. Be with our own families, as it were. You know, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Our door is open. Give us a heads up. But our door is open. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Whatever your business is, whether it's secular or whatever the Lord has called you to, not slothful in it. Rejoicing in hope. Hold your place. Hold your place. First Timothy chapter 1. Rejoicing in hope. First Timothy chapter 1. Come on, fingers. I'll, I'll get that. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Rejoicing in hope. And while, while we're on this kick, of course, we've got to go to uh, uh, Hebrews 11. Okay? Hebrews 11. Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble are going to have to have that enduring um, faith that the Lord is going to come back once they wake up. Um, <laughs> verse 11. Now faith is the seven, uh, uh, Hebrews 11, verse 1, excuse me. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We don't see Jesus Christ today, physically. We'll see him um, during the kingdom of heaven, of course, because he's going to be on the throne. Okay, And this is why when you got these charismatic devils who say, I've seen it. You've seen the Lord. You ain't seen nothing. You've seen a devil, if not the devil himself, you lying hypocrite. Oh, that's right. You perfect creatures. You perfect uh, spiritual and temporal co uh, Jesuit coadjutors. You, you never have any moments of hypocrisy, do you? Because you're so <coughs> perfect. Yeah. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, Continuing instant in prayer. Pray about it. Do it. Who cares who's watching? Careful you're not doing it to be watched. Because our Lord talks about that in Matthew 23. No, brother, sister, you're walking with the Lord and uh, something comes up. And you got to pray about it. Hit your knees on that gravel. Hit your knees on that grass. Hit your knees in that parking lot out by your... It doesn't matter. Okay. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. You know, if uh, my brother from Ohio, our brother, excuse me, our brother from Ohio, were to one day, Brad, I, I, I had to come here and visit Okay, come on in, come on in. Okay, this is Brother Alexander's room, but I mean, hey, it's a, it's another bed, okay? Okay, my wife's a really good cook, by the way. Okay? All right? We would make accommodation. Okay? If a sister appeared uh, from out of nowhere, it's like, okay? I'll admit that that would be a little awkward if it were a sister. It would. Uh, but, you know, then again, uh, we would never, you know, it would never be just myself and that sister. My wife would always be present. Always. Always. Okay? Always. You know, but there again, you know, our door is open. Our door is open. It would be nice, you know, try to let us know that you're coming and, or, or get a hold of us first. And it's like, well, you know, but there, but there again. Okay? Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. Bless them with which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? By shooing them? By telling them truth? 
and shewing them truth. You know, you make such a, a, to, a to do about truth. Can you, are you able to suffer for that truth when this isn't on? Man, yeah. Remember, the enemy can only go so far, brethren. Okay? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them with that Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Be not wise in your own conceits. Thinking you're like this super duper high on the horse elder that gives you the right to talk down to people and treat them as inferior when the reality is some have been walking with the Lord a little bit longer than you have. But nonetheless, see, we are to rejoice with them that rejoice, that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. I'm not wearing your shoes. I want to try to have that empathy for you to what, what, what would it be like to wear your shoes? You don't know, Brad. You're right, I don't. But I'm going to love you as if I am. And I'm going to be there for you as if I am. Even though I'm not. You're right. I don't know what it's like to have your pain. I don't know what it's like to feel what you're feeling. You're right, I don't. But out of love for the brethren, where we prefer one another, I'm going to try to put my shoes, my feet in your shoes, even though I can't. And that's got me in some hot water with a couple of the brethren. Because I want to try to understand that where you're coming from, even though I can't. And it's even gotten, even, even, even you know, on occasion, even my best friend, and you're just like, Brad, like, I, I'm sorry, brother, I'm sorry. I want to, I want your perspective on what you're feeling and what the, what the Lord is putting you through, even though my feet aren't in your shoes. You know, sometimes we can overdo that, but the point is, brethren, we are to rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them with weep. We are to be of the same mind, one toward another. And we have disagreements. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But see, this, the truth, is what binds us. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of Truth, who will guide you into all truth. Why do you think you can have people who are false speak to you that which is true? Okay? Okay? Because this speaks for itself, yes. But see, okay, then you want a devil to tell you truth? Hmm? Hmm? It's just like the same thing with the hymns, okay? It doesn't matter who's singing the hymns, but... It's the hymn itself, right? doesn't matter that a devil is telling you truth, even from the scriptures even, right? doesn't matter. He's telling you truth. The truth in and of itself is yes, but I don't want the devil telling me truth. Uh, I don't want the devil singing me hymns. But the who, that's not important. <coughs> Liar. Your cover is blown. Go away. Thank you. And remember too, brother. Let's remember this. Uh, go to Ezekiel 9. <laughs> and see, uh, Ezekiel 9, verses 1 on to verse 4, okay? Christians, well, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. You go ahead and associate, say, associate yourself 
with the devil and Christianity. You go ahead and defend it so you can call saved people lost and defend your heresy. You go right ahead. You go right ahead. Okay. But Ezekiel 9 verses 1 and verse 4. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man has fought a weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was, to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writers in corn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, the way these devils operate, um, they would try to tie this. When the body of Christ, the church of the living God, is redeemed, resurrected, okay? Hence, that will begin the time of Jacob's trouble, where eternal security will not be there except for the 144,000 Jews. Two witnesses are going to be there, and yes, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be focusing on the Jews, okay? All right? Um, will Gentiles be saved during the time of Jacob's trouble? It's possible. But it's primarily, remember, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews. Okay? It's for the Jews. Uh, Gentiles that uh, get saved during that period, I believe, are going to be of that number, of that great number that gets killed right away. Okay? Because there are those that are going to be left behind, and then they're going to realize, oh, we blew it! I believe a lot of these easy believism heretic devils um, or the, the, these people who were duped, excuse me, by these easy believism heretic devils, um, I believe those who were duped by them who get left behind and realize, oh, wow, we were wrong. I believe they are going to be attributed to a great number of those that are killed during that time. Okay, That's what I personally believe. Okay. But during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, the body of Christ is not going to be on the earth. Okay? Eternal security is not there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't believe the easy believism heretics, okay? They're 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 of Satan, okay? But the 144,000 Jews, they are the ones that are going to be sealed. The two witnesses, okay? I bet you that Satan is going to try to work because it says, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. I bet you somewhere down the line, Satan is going to try to twist this to justify the mark of the beast. Because Amos chapter 8, the famine in the land, will reach its fulfillment during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, the word of God is going to be there during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, yes it is. But those people that take that mark are going to be hardened in their minds, but they're going to be permanently, they're going to go to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay? And without the body of Christ on the earth, I, I bet you they're going to, uh, Satan is going to try to weave uh, Ezekiel 9 verse 4 into convincing people Hey, you sigh for the way things are? Take this mark. Take this mark. That way, hey, see? The bad things won't happen to you now that you take this mark, right? That, see, that's what Satan and his ministers of righteousness do. They do that today with Romans and other portions of the Pauline epistles where they take these things, it's like, oh, well, Paul is actually writing doctrine for the time of Jacob's trouble. Then they go, well, what about Hebrews? We thought we discussed this before, and that I've done two admonitions, that's it, I'm done, let's go on. Okay? But I but see, I read this too for two reasons. Okay, to remind you of how the devils operate. But see, you and I, we sigh, brethren. 
We grow. He's coming. He's coming for us. Sooner or later, we are going to hear it come up hither. Okay? We are. But we also got to remember too, brethren, we also got to remember the fact that there are people, I beg your pardon, that there are people who have gone past that no point of no return. There are people that have gone past that point of no return. They've made their choice. It's not that God cannot save them. Salvation is not at gunpoint by God or even, or even by Satan. Okay? God isn't going to remove your free will. Unlike what Calvin says. Unlike what the uh, kindredists say, you know, like the black Hebrew Israelites or the British Hebrew Israelites, okay? Who, that's a veiled thing of Calvinism, elect and non-elect, okay? God is not going to take your free will, okay? Well, what about Pharaoh, right? We've discussed that already. Pharaoh's heart was already har hardened. He just... You know, the Lord's like, okay, he's already gone. He already thinks he is his own little God. Uh, so I'm just going to help him along with his fall. Okay? This is, see, that's, that's what the devils do. They justify the wicked for reward. You know? The devils, brethren, don't forget this. And this is another reason why you and I mourn. Okay? In Isaiah chapter 5. Okay? Verses 20, on to verse 23. This is what the easy believers and heretics have done. This is what some of these King James Bible lawyer and Christians do. Okay? Woe unto them that call... Uh, uh, Isaiah 5, 20, on to verse 23. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. What reward? All this shall be given to thee, if you fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. You know, Jeremiah talks about, pray not for this people. But yet, Paul says we're to pray for everybody that we may lead a peaceable and quiet life. Are you to pray for a government that is controlled by the Jesuit order who is uh, bent on destroying a nation? No. 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 How do we pray? Lord, keep the devils at, off of us that you may, that, we, that the work may be done through your body and stuff like that. Okay? And see, Christianity wants to say that's heresy because God loves you unconditionally. Does God love you unconditionally? No. No, he doesn't. You reject the gospel, one time you are a child of wrath. First Samuel, just one verse, verse 16. I, I am being persuaded that there are some out there who say they are of us, but they're not, okay, um, have been ex exposed, but yet still remain relatively hidden, because they're very clever, okay. <clears throat> First Samuel 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go... I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. How long are we going to mourn and weep for those who we know have gone past the point of no return? One of the things that was helpful in coping with the loss of my mother was knowing that she had, been, she had heard the true gospel. And she wanted nothing to do with it. And my mother died possessed of many devils. She had gone past the point of no return. 
wish it wouldn't wish it hadn't been that way and I I mourn for it that it was my mother but it's like she made her choice she made her choice and of course you can grieve yes you can but you have to keep that in mind they've made their choice the impossible is possible with God yes but God's not going to force anything on you. No matter how many people want to tell you contrary-wise, or how, how, uh, how sometimes that would be great if that were the case, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be great if the Lord forcibly did these things for us sometimes? Wouldn't that be great, huh? Yeah, it would. It would be, wouldn't it, brother, sister? And then you would be a robot. Titus chapter 3. We're almost done. Titus chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 7. Where are you going, Brad? Titus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. So then when you have a government that's going contrary to the scriptures... The Christians will come around and twist this and say, even though it's going contrary to the scriptures. That does, okay? Yeah. Yeah. This is my standard. Okay? And when a nation is saying sodomite marriage is okay, no, I'm not supporting that. No, I'm against that. I'm, I'm against that. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay? But... You know, we are to obey the laws, you know, because police are there for the, um, to reward evildoers, you know, breaking the speed limit, killing someone, stealing, that kind of stuff, okay? Yeah. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men, now, being gentle, again, is not being a sissified weakling. No, but you don't take the scriptures and badger people over the head with it. At first, you give them morsels, because if you give them too much, like uh, Mark the Messenger, deer in the headlights, no one there, and they shut off, okay? Give them little morsels, all right? And also, again, not talking down to people as if they're inferior to you. When you think you're this great elder. Warning. For we are, and right here, brethren, this we have to remember. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. You and I used to be that. That's why it's, it's, you know, we have pity for these people who have made their choice. That's why we have sorrow for, these, for people who are willfully ignorant and or ignorant and who don't, you know, who stop their ears and gnash their teeth. They don't want to hear. I don't want to hear it. Okay. Today still... Someone will hear it. Go on to the next one. But you got to remember, brethren. When you start thinking you're this high and mighty elder and you talk over and talk down and don't listen, you only listen with the, okay, oh, ah, oh, no, ah, ah. Listening with the intent to eventually pounce You ain't no elder. You ain't no saint. You ain't of the church of the living God. You go ahead and be a Christian. Because that's what you are. You ain't of the church of the living God. You got to remember from whence we came. We don't dwell on it like all the enemies want to, you know, bog you down to keep you there. Okay, that's a tactic of the enemy. They want to keep you shackled. But we are never to forget where we came from. To remember that the person that you're talking to was once you, maybe? 
And here, let me make it even more challenging for some of you. What if they're of an opposing kindred of yourself? <gasps> I've heard people say, well, I won't go witness onto a Hamite because they don't want to hear it from me anyway. <laughs> okay. Okay, Zikhal, pal. What's wrong with you? Okay? Even Peter. Okay, remember? Peter. He was sent to Cornelius. And he's like, you know, it's not lawful for me, being a Jew, to consort with guys like you, Gentiles. But the Lord showed me that which I have cleansed, call not thou common. Paul was made all things unto all men. Okay? And when you got some putts out there saying, well, I'm, I'm not going to go well, witness to Hamites, and they don't want to hear it from me anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Zikhaya, pal. Yeah, Zikhaya, pal. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. What if it's what the Lord wants you as Japheth to witness onto the Hamites? Hey, what if you're a Hamite and wants you to go witness onto the Japheth? Or the Shemitic, or the Shemites, huh? What if that? What if a uh, saved uh, Hamitic brother? You know, the Lord's calling you to go uh, witness on to the Japhethites. Okay. Think about that. Okay. We were once there ourselves, brethren. Let us not forget that. Let's continue. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, yeah, like saving yourself by your own belief, you breaking yourself, hmm. or being broken and then coming to the foot of the cross, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm broken, but I can do better. I can do better. Yeah. So see, I'm going to go about like we saw in James. I can do better. I'm going to go look at all these people and say how everybody is wrong. Except yourself, right? Yeah. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which was shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And of course, and of course, um, where, where is that? Verse 13 in chapter 2? Uh, 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 chapter 2 in Titus? Verse 11? On to verse 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. It's available to all men. But not everybody is going to go the way the Lord uh, prescribed. Most of them are going to boot the door and climb up some other way. Okay? <laughs> Your ways are movable that no one can know them. Anyway. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world as ambassadors for Christ. Yes. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, that must be talking about for another dispensation, right? Because it says appearing. There's no appearing to us now, right? <clears throat> who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise them. In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. We're almost done. Just a quick little video here. You know? Uh, 
I, uh, my one brother from Ohio, uh, I've cried about. You're on my, you're on my heart, brother from Ohio. You're on my heart. I actually shed tears. I shed a lot of tears, actually, for my safe brethren. There's a sister of ours who's just going through, and I, I don't even know the extent, but you know, wish I, wish I could make it better. You know, my best friend, daily pain. My brother, our brother from North Dakota in daily pain. Brother from out uh, uh, north, uh, northeast of us, going through you know family troubles and you know. Poor brother um, from Croatia, struggling with that. What he struggles with with his family and his health, and another brother who's also dealing with health and family issues as well. It's just so much. You know, brother, but uh, we can't forget who is our hope. Never forget who is your hope. Brad, that's easy for you to say because you're not feeling what you're feeling. Because you're not feeling what I'm feeling or you're not going to. So does that mean that you, does that give you an excuse to forget who your hope is? If ye, uh, Colossians 3, 1 on 7. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, mortify, kill. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, and the Lord abhorreth the covetous. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. For say, but now ye also put off all these, Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Uh, putting on the new man, you know, being born again. And finally, 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. You're going to try to fit into that mold that is called Christian? More power to you. I'm not. Go ahead. Go ahead and uh, label yourself as something that they called us. Then again, like I said, uh, it's, you know, the example of the hymns. It's to him what matters. It doesn't matter that Johnny Cash or Elvis Presley are singing it to you, right? Brethren, do not forget who is our hope. And your sufferings have purpose, have reason, 
Who knows if you're going through a certain suffering right now to be an example unto someone else or to comfort someone else who may come along. You don't know. Strengthen yourself in the scriptures and face this day in the strength of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are dependent on him. Thank you for watching this. If you do, that's going to be it for this video. Um, you know, try to, wanted to, you know, a little encouragement. Because, uh, like I said, uh, the Lord has been getting on me about being in contact with the brethren. And um, I'm going to, be, going to start doing that right now. And, you know, the brethren that I've been talking to, a lot of them are just suffering. But there is joy joy in that suffering standing against abortion standing for the scriptures and being an examples on to the brethren there is joy don't allow our joy who is our lord jesus christ don't allow the devil to take your eyes off of Jesus and pay attention to the boisterous wind. Now, can we do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No. Not even Paul could do that. Okay? It's not what I'm saying. We are going to divert our eyes. It's because of this. But don't stay there. Because as Paul said, never forget this, brother, sister, never forget this. I'm not, I'm not wearing your shoes. I'm not wearing your shoes. No, I'm not. Brother, sister, I can't see that barely. Oh, uh, Romans 7, 24 and 25. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, law of sin. Remember, he's not justifying sin. What is he saying? He's like, I can't be sinlessly perfect. I'm going to strive to stay away from sin, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to sin anyway. So then we shouldn't try, right? Uh, the Lord rebuke you. Then what do you do with uh, Romans chapter 6? Thank you for watching this if you do. Thank you, brethren, for all your prayers and all your help, your support, the gifts of your fellowship, the gifts of your prayer. We can use all the prayer we can get. Um, speaking of that, um, I, I have been, I'm in prayer now along with uh, another about trying a new thing here as far as videos uh, i'm not going to reveal it yet because i don't know if uh, it's going to be able to work um it will be involving skype uh but please keep that in your prayers if you will as the lord leads uh, we need your prayers and you know brethren if you need prayer from the body of christ the church of the living god and you want it known publicly, um, let me know. There are two emails. Uh, I, you know, the community section, use that for, you know, hey, brother so-and-so has a, or sister so-and-so has a prayer request. It will be put in the co uh, community thing, okay? Use that for that means. So, anyway, that's it. Going to go. Got things to do. Thank you, brethren. We love you. We will see you in the next video.